electrolytic cell here where um, it, it's a bell and, and it's placed in some copper sulfate solution. And so here's my strongest oxidizing agent and that's my half reaction that's gonna happen at the cathode. Here's my strongest reducing agent. That's the half reaction that's gonna happen at the anode. And so I want this copper to be produced onto my bell. I want the bell to be coated in copper, electroplated in that copper. And so I want this, these copper two pluses to go to my, I want these copper two pluses to go there and pick up two electrons and become copper. And I want this to happen at the cathode. Now in an electrolytic cell, the cathodes are negatively charged. So I better hook this up to the negative end of the battery and have that be the positive end of the battery, turn my battery on, I'll have bubbles forming here, oxygen bubbles, and my pH is gonna go down. So if I had some um, uh, universal indicator, it would be turning red around that anode. Okay, all good, that's electrolytic cells. But you know, or I, I hope you have some sort of intuition, that if I cranked this battery up, that I would get a lot more deposit. Or if I left it for the weekend, and went bam, and then came back on Monday, I would have a lot more deposit than if I just left it on for a second and then turned it off. So time has something to do with how much copper I'm gonna get, and so does the current. How many electrons are flowing out of this battery in order for my copper to pick them up? So time has something to do with this and amperage has something to do with this about how much copper I'm gonna have deposited. And so in order to do the math here about what mass of copper I would form, I'm gonna need some formulas to help me out. And the formulas come not from Faraday, they were named after Faraday, as in like on, in his honor. But these are the two formulas that we're gonna use. So either the number of moles of electrons that are gonna come out of that battery. Remember, a mole is six billion trillion, like a group of six billion trillion. And so, but electrons aren't really circles, right? They're kind of clouds of electron density. And so somebody had to say, hey, when that cloud has this much zap power, we're gonna call that one mole of electrons or a dozen electrons, right? So when that power comes out, the charge comes out of this much zap power, we're gonna call that a mole of electrons. So this is charge, charge is measured in coulombs. This is Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is how many coulombs are we gonna call a mole of electrons? So how much zap power does a mole of electrons have? So if two zap powers come out, then I will have two moles of electrons is what this is gonna end up being. But zap power isn't really a, a thing, right? And so what that equates to is the amperage, that's how many electrons are flying out of that battery per second, and time in seconds. So how much zap power that, that has is equal to amperage uh, times the time. You can hear my son coloring in the background, I think. Okay, so, uh, right, so those are the two formulas that we're gonna use. In order to use those formulas, and here's what they all mean, blah, 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 I already did that. We're gonna have to do some stoichiometry here, and with stoichiometry, we always write a balanced chemical reaction. But for some reason, when students are doing Faraday's law, they stop writing this balanced chemical reaction. Don't do that. You still have to write a half reaction, okay? And you're gonna use the question, not use your data booklet, because sometimes it tells me that I'm going from chromium three plus to chromium solid. And in my data booklet, it says chromium three plus goes to chromium two plus. So don't use your data booklet, use your the question only. So like you did at the very beginning of this unit before you knew the data booklet existed, right? So you're gonna write the half reaction, then you're gonna put your under, info underneath, and then you're gonna do some stoic. So for example, let's use this bell, and let's say that the we would like to find out what the final mass of the bell is gonna be, okay? I'm gonna crank up this battery so that my amperage is equal to 0 0.876 amps. And I'm gonna let it fly for a time of 75 minutes. And I would like to know what the mass is of that bell at the end. 
So because I'm talking about the copper that's made, I'm gonna be using this half reaction, and I don't care about the other half reaction right now, and I'm gonna do my math with this half reaction. So let me just get that set up for us. Okay, so here's a question. Let's say that that piece of copper bell, right, the bell is um, hooked up at the cathode, and it's the cell has a current of that many amperages, and it's flowing for 75 minutes in a copper sulfate solution. Determine the final mass of that bell. So here is my system like it was before. There's the bell, there's the copper sulfate. It's gonna go over there, it's gonna pick up two electrons, it's gonna become copper solid. So more copper on that bell. And so the current and the time has to do with the electrons. So first of all, I write a half reaction. There's my half reaction. Then I put the information underneath. Here's my current, here's my time in my electron column. And I wanna know how much mass of copper I'm gonna make in this column. And so my number of moles of electrons is going to be I times T, I times T divided by Fe. So here's my amperage, 8.76 amps, uh, 0.876 amps. And the time I've converted into seconds, 4,500 seconds, divided by Faraday's constant, 9.65 times 10 to the power of 4 coulombs per mole. Now you can find that in your data booklet on page three, so it's not something you need to memorize. And that's gonna give me, remember the first thing I do in stoichiometry, remember this dance that I do, the first thing I do is I find my number of moles of electrons. And then, and I'm gonna have to use one of these formulas to do that, these new formulas. Then after I find that my number of moles of electrons is 0 0.0408 moles, the second part of my stoichiometry dance is to multiply that, remember, go down the stream, cross the bridge. So I have to change the subject from electrons into copper, and the only thing that can do that is my balanced chemical equation. So one mole of copper over two moles of electrons. So I'm timesing that by one and then dividing it by two in order to get my moles of copper, which is 0.02. So if I have 0.02 moles of copper, can I figure out the mass? Sure, I'm just gonna use the molar mass. So the moles of copper times my molar mass is going to give me my mass of copper. So I'm going to make, if I turn this battery on for 45 minutes and I make sure the amperage is that is 0.876 amps, I'm going to produce, I'm going to create, I'm going to make 1.30 grams. So that's my 1.30 grams that I'm creating. And then I'm going to add that mass to the original mass of the belt because it's going to stick to the belt. So that was the original mass of that electrode. I add the 1.30 grams to it, and my final mass of that bell is going to be 27.02 grams. This is also called electroplating 